Click the links to join the channel, become a member, or join us over on Subscribe Star or Odyssey Bitch You Gap and Telegram. You know, it's it's funny with these useful idiots uh, um, that, that the media takes all these Jesse Smollett situations seriously, and you realize with those situations, like 95% of them are just the Jesse Smollett situation where a guy gets behind payments on his truck, so he paints a crooked cross on it. And then, you know, to get a GoFundMe going and like, oh, this neighborhood is so intolerant to me. It's like, yeah, hey, the neighbor's high definition cameras caught you out there spray painting your own truck because as it turns out, you were behind on the payments or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a hoax. It's a it's a hate hoax. It's like, no, it's 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 not a hoax because who do you who is who are you blaming for this kind of stuff? You're blaming one specific class of people. It's hatred against them. It's stochastic terrorism against them. Every time a Jesse Smollett comes out and, and the globalist media takes it so, so seriously, they go, oh, oh two, um, two guys uh, you know, said, this is MAGA country. So it's hate against the MAGA. It's also, like, who, who were the description of the guys? Two white guys came and they did all this to me. It's like, yeah, nobody, nobody believes that, but you're spreading hate against that one class of people. And the media takes it very, very seriously, though almost every single time it's fake. It's a hoax for, you know, a GoFundMe. And the media knows that, and the media continues to take it seriously. The real question is not these grifters. These are these are the end stage useful idiots. The, even the the attorney who legitimately looks low IQ. I saw him in an interview. He was having a hard time um, speaking. I think the only language he speaks, which is weird. Um, and and the moms like they're just grifters. They're just useful idiots. They're they're just pawns. They're not the puppet masters who are pulling these strings. The media is a couple steps above them, but even them ultimately they're not the puppet masters either. But they're Pretty, pretty close. I mean, they're carrying out the same the same uh, machinations. They made all this possible. Like, this should have been laughed off. And it was like, oh, gee, the media takes everything so seriously as long as he defames one group of people. Like, you got to have noticed that by now. Anyway, um, you never apologize to the Bolsheviks or the useful idiots. Don't give them an inch or they'll control you. You don't feed a crocodile because it will never end. It's always ravenous. You're feeding a fire with oxygen and expecting it to go out, or you're paying a blackmailer and expecting them to stop. Why would they? This grift will just never, never end. And uh, Sesame Street, like, they came out and they vaguely apologized. They, this is not okay. Why would you admit fault for something you didn't do? The person who played the character, they're seen out of this mask they can probably barely see out of. They're tired, they're hot. Kids are obnoxious all day, and the kids are stepping over the line, and they just wave them off because they're over the line or they didn't want to slow down or something. You didn't do anything wrong, but by apologizing, all you do is give these people ammunition. They see it like, oh, see, see, they admitted it. It's like, how do you, how do you be a public relations person for a company and not know this and just like automatically panic when when this kind of stuff happens? It's it's weird how how naive they are. They think they're dealing with people. In, in good faith. They're absolutely not. You're like, obviously, you're dealing with grifters. The girl, the person in the costume didn't do anything wrong. They did, Either they didn't see the kid or the kid was over the yellow line. They weren't supposed to. All they did was wave them off. You know that's not a big deal. And the other, it's like a 10-second video. It didn't show any liability at all. There's nothing to apologize for. You probably should have ignored it or said, hey, we reviewed the situation and the character... You explained it like the, the two girls were over the line, and the character's not allowed to touch them if they're over the line because then they're they might get hit by the float, or the character didn't see them, or, or it's like oh I think it was something like you want to stop and pause for a photograph, and the characters don't do that or on, when they're on the parade route because they don't have time to do that. It's like explain it rationally, reasonably, calmly, and then it's over and never address it again, no matter how much they try to blow it up because you're just feeding them like you did. It, Sesame Street did everything exactly wrong by somewhat apologizing to it. It's like you're giving them leverage over you. Why would you do that? These are clearly grifters who see a chance for a million dollar settlement or maybe under a million dollars. You're insane if you're treating them as if they're acting in good faith. And, and no, they're not going to... Will it survive summary judgment for a, a USC code? Probably not. Like, probably not. They're hoping it never it never has to go to that. And but it would be the best thing for Sesame Street if if they didn't settle, if they took it to court and it just it got it got denied in summary judgment. It said like there's no cause of action here, even if you were to prove all your allegations. Um, or if it went to court and they lost, it's like you know you get an idiot jury. It's like they look at this, they go, oh well, it's just a big company. They're insured. That concept of of people who are le left of the bell curve, they look at all the stuff that's going on. They go, oh, well, they're insured. They're insured. And like. How do, okay, one, one, you're an idiot. How do you think insurance works? You think it's a magic money tree? It's, it's people pay in to pool um, risks and benefits. 
And, and two, like, what effect does that have on the fabric of society? Oh, wait a minute. That requires that I think generations ahead for my offspring? Yeah, can you do that? No, sir, I'm incapable of that. Okay, well, I mean, you get what you get. Like, there's nothing, there's nothing in place to stop this grifting because the media is fueling it, and the media controls the narrative, and until you handle the media, um, nothing will change. In fact, it will just continue to accelerate and get worse until, until the inevitable conclusion happens, which you all know what's going to happen. Um, so these, uh, like grifters, people need boundaries in society. Um, otherwise, they'll ruin it for everyone, which is exactly what happened in this park with this Rosita character. They um, they pull the character from the park and they pull all of the merchandise associated with the character. It's like it's millions of dollars. This this one grifting family did something that one ruined the enjoyment for everyone else who wants to take part in a high trust society. But there's nothing in place. Like the the company doesn't have the balls to just step up and say, "Yeah, it looks like you're grifting and you're ruining the park for everybody." So I tell you what, uh, you're prohibited from entering the park ever again. Uh, this character didn't do anything wrong. We don't appreciate being defamed, and we don't appreciate def- you defaming the actor who wore the costume. You're, you're essentially you're calling her a racist. You're calling us the same thing. It's like, you're not welcome to the park anymore because you're ruining the good time for everybody. We're good people who work at Sesame Place. The actors are good people, too. They don't see everybody. It's That's part of the, the grease of civilization, of a high-trust society, is you can't make... You can't be like a barracks attorney for every little issue. You have to let things go. Otherwise, you turn a high-trust society into a low-trust society, and you ruin it for everybody. It's like, well, this is a low-trust society now, and they did ruin it for everybody because the character's gone. But do you think you're going to have characters walk around and do high-fives for kids and pose for pictures anymore? It's not worth the liability. So it's like, you're gonna see, what are you going to see in theme parks now? It's like this one... This shows you how unstable this, this society is because nobody is willing to step up and just say what I said. They get, yeah, you're a grifter. This looks like you're grifting. We didn't do anything wrong. Um, you're always going to have these people like running around with cameras now try to catch a way to make a couple dollars. It's never going to end unless you put your foot down and set boundaries for people. And, and like how the public relations people don't know that is kind of beyond me. And, and yeah, they did run it for everybody. So all those kids are not going to get any high fives from these, these characters, these Sesame Street characters. They're all riding on the floats now because of one grifting family. And like I said, they're the useful idiots. They're the end stage. The media for 60, 70 years has set the stage for this. And, and the companies themselves, like, if you don't put your foot down for this, it never ends. Like, you could have just, you could have just released a, quick reasonable explanation like i didn't see her it it i don't know i mean but they don't they bend over they feed oxygen to the fire and the entire park structure changes because of one grifting parasitical family anyway like comment subscribe i'll see you guys all on odyssey and bitchute